All right, so today we're going to continue on with our discussion of the central nervous system. We've already gone through the spinal cord. Now I want to begin to talk just a little bit about the brain. And we are going to begin with brain geography. I'm going to put geography in quotes there because it's not really an anatomical term, but we're going to be dealing with positional location on this semi-round structure called the brain. Uh, so initially I'd like to discuss the use of directional terms in reference to brain structures. So what you're looking at here in this figure is the use of eight different terms that can be used to describe the top, the front, the bottom, and the back of the brain. The term rostral uh, also can refer to as anterior is going to be a directional term that refers to towards the forehead. The opposite of this is going to be caudal. And this refers to toward the back of the head. Then the top is referred to as the dorsal surface. So this is going to be top. Could also be used here as superior. Uh, and then we could use ventral to describe the bottom. Also can use in now you can also look at the left and right uh, using terms such as medial and lateral. Now the brain has some several major components and we're going to refer to those as the major regions. So this is a uh, sagittal view of the brain and what you can see is we have several different areas that are highlighted here. The cerebrum is the part of the brain um, that you can see here in this figure. And this is the largest portion of the brain and it accounts for about 83% of total weight. Then we have this small little piece of the brain here that sort of looks like a walnut. In fact, it, in uh, colloquial terms or anecdotally is frequently referred to as a walnut. Properly, it is the cerebellum. The cerebellum is going to be about 10% of the total weight. And then finally, uh, shown here in color, we have what is known as the brainstem. And the diencephalon, even though it's separated out in this picture, is technically part of the brainstem. And this uh, portion of the brain accounts for the remaining 7% of total weight. All right, so we're going to deal with each of these regions in a little more detail. And we'll begin with the cerebrum. Now, the cerebrum is divided into two divisions. So there are two divisions that make up the cerebrum, and they are going to be called the cerebral hemispheres. The cerebral hemispheres which you would be able to see in a frontal plane, they're going to be divided into a left and a right. So the left and the right hemisphere. From a histological perspective, the tissue makeup of the cerebrum uh, is folded into gyri. 
the singular is gyros. And that's what you can see here. Each of these kind of folded pieces of tissue here, these are going to be our gyrus or our gyri. Now, there is also a groove in between individual gyri. Those grooves are properly referred to as sulci, uh, individually or singularly would be a sulcus. Now along the crest of the brain here, and you can see a little bit of it illustrated here, but there's a, a, a long division line. It's a, a crack, if you will, and that is the left and right point of division for our left and right uh, cerebral hemispheres. And so they're divided by that long crack that's known as the longitudinal fissure. Now as we move into the brain, the division here eventually it terminates at a structure that's called the corpus callosum. cerebellum, again, this is the tissue that looks like an uncracked walnut. Positionally, this is going to be located posterior and inferior. In those two tissues, there's actually going to be another fissure that separates these two portions of tissue. Separated by the transverse cerebral fissure. Now, even though it's really small, it's actually highly innervated, so much so that it contains more than half. Remember, it's about 10% of the total brain weight. It's more than half of the nerves in the brain. And the cerebral cortex is going to have two different layers. The outer layer, as you probably already have guessed, is going to be called the cortex. So we'll have the cerebral cortex, which is primarily made up of gray matter. And then we'll have our inner tissue. And that inner tissue is going to be called the nuclei. And it's going to be comprised primarily of myelinated tissue. So it'll be white matter. The remaining 7% again is going to be brainstem. And the brainstem is a vertical stock of tissue. And this would be what would be left over if 
we were to remove the cerebrum and cerebellum. And as you can see in this picture here, there are multiple parts that make up the brain cell. And so we're going to work through these parts. We'll go from rostral to caudal. In other words, from top to bottom. So rostral to caudal. The very first part is the diencephalon. Next would be the midbrain. So here's our diencephalon, and then we get to the midbrain, and then we have sort of this loop like structure here. That is going to be the pons. And then finally, the lowest portion on here that leads into the spinal column is the most famous part of the brain, made famous by the movie The Water Boy, is the medulla. Oblongata. The medulla oblongata. The brain stem's proper inferior position will be located at the foramen magnum. So the brain stem terminates and becomes spinal cord at foramen magnum. Then is where the spinal cord would be. Again. So what you're looking at in this figure here, this is a internal cross-sectional structure. So hopefully you can see things like the pons and the medulla oblongata, the uh, cortex of the cerebral uh, cerebellum rather, and then the nuclei of the cerebellum. Here's the corpus callosum. So this is all would be fissure. We would be able to pull away the other hemisphere here along that longitudinal fissure. So we can take a look at this brain uh, cross-section and this is a figure that you should spend some time with. Um, there's all kinds of different features in here. You can see that we have sulci and gyri uh, there's also going to be the individual lobes of the brain, such as the occipital lobe and the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe. Um, you can see the temporal lobe down here, the inner surface of the temporal lobe. Uh, parts of the third ventricle, for third ventricular space, the corpus callosum, the hypothalamic tissue and pituitary tissue is going to be within this area. Um, so um, take a look at this brain cross-section and, and be sure that you are familiar with these structures. Now, just like the spinal cord, the brain also has its own set of nerves. And these are going to be referred to as cranial nerves. So we have both spinal nerves that come off of the spinal cord and cranial nerves that protrude off of the base of the brain itself. In total, there are 12 cranial nerves that emerge directly from the brain. So 12 cranial nerves that arise directly from the brain. And again, they're called the cranial nerves. You're going to need to be familiar with all 12 of these. And I'm going to give you a mnemonic device that should help you to learn these cranial nerves. And I'm going to give them to you in order of how they are numbered and just have you be aware at the onset here that there is going to be some differences in their order of numbering versus the order of appearance from the um, interior to posterior, anterior to posterior side of the brain. So I'm going to give you the mnemonic device first. And then we'll fill in some other parts here. So the mnemonic device is old opie occasionally
tries trigonometry. Very gloomy bag. So old Opie occasionally tries trigonometry and feels very gloomy, vague, and hypoactive. Now this, I've given you 1 through 12, the first letter of each of the cranial nerves that you'll need to know. So old is a cranial nerve starts with O, and that's going to be olfactory, which is cranial nerve number one. We give the cranial nerves these Roman numerals. This is another way that we can reference. So cranial nerve one is also known as olfactory. Next is optic. And then oculomotor. First T here tries is trochlear. Trigonometry is, so you got trig, which means three. We have trigeminal, which is going to be number five. The first and is abducens. Number six. Feels is facial. Number seven, very is vestibular cochlear. So vestibular cochlear, which will be number eight. The gloomy is glossopharyngeal. to be Vegas, which is number 10. The second and is accessory. Which is cranial nerve number 11. And then last here, hypoactive is going to be hypoglossal. So we have olfactory, optical, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, spatial, vestibular, cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. Now I've already sort of alluded that the number order is not going to hold in brain order from anterior to posterior. So let's make sure that we also know the order in the context of the brain. So we'll begin here at the top, and you can see that number one, olfactory, is actually going to be our first cranial nerve. These are all located on the base of the brain or at the base of the brain. And the order that they come in from the front to back. So looking at the brain, if you can orient yourself with the front side and the back side, you can just go right down the line and begin to name these cranial nerves. And the way that they'll work is we'll go one, I'm sorry, there we go, one through ten in that order. So olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular, cochlear, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. Then when we get here, 
to accessory and hypoglossal. Hypoglossal is actually going to come before accessory. So you could just go right down the line and you'll see that we get down here in this figure and number 10 is right here and then this is number 12 and number 11 down here. So accessory is way down here. They've actually got it pointed that the, the nerve is here for accessory and they've reflected this up. Normally it comes out like this. Now, what else you see on this figure are the functions. And so you see that olfactory is involved in the sensation of smelling. So this is going to be involved in the nose. And each of these cranial nerves will have a function. So olfactory is important in smell. Optic, important in vision. Oculomotor is going to be important in the movement of the eye and also constriction of the pupil. Trochlear will be also involved in eye movement. Trigeminal is going to be involved in the sensation of touch and pain. Uh, in particular, the touch and pain sensations in the face and in the head. We will also innervate chewing muscles with trigeminal. Abducens also involved in eye movement. Facial is going to be involved in the sensation of taste. And then in ear, pain, and touch. And also facial expression. Vestibular cochlear will be involved in hearing and balance. Glossal pharyngeal involved in taste and swallowing. touch and pain sensation of the tongue, tonsils, and the pharynx. Vegas, uh, you may see the word Las Vegas or Vagabond. This is a wandering, a wanderer. And Vegas is named such because it does wander throughout the whole body. 
and it helps to provide functions of many of our visceral organs. Things like adjusting heart rate. Accessory is going to be important in head movement. And lastly, hypoglossal. So it'll be important to not only know the locations of these 12 cranial nerves, but also a general idea of what their functions will be.